So, the first thing is, uh, we're talking about medians, right? Medians are based on midpoints, and if I want to work out midpoints on this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to impose, this is what a couple of you actually suggested to me, I'm going to impose some coordinate geometry language onto here, okay? So I've got uh, three corners of the triangle, right? So I'm going to call one x1, y1. I can't give it any more you know, specific label than that because it could be anywhere, right? Um, this could be a random point, so I'm going to call it x2, y2, and then I guess I'll be original and call this x3, y3. Is that alright? So I've, I've put coordinate geometry structure on this, okay? Let's have a look at this guy over here, this particular midpoint which produces this median that I was drawing my colours on and all that kind of thing. How do I find out where that midpoint is? Well this is pretty simple, right? To find m, it's the midpoint of x1, y1, and x2, y2. Can you, can you go ahead and quote that to me? What's the midpoint? I'll give you a clue. It starts with an x. I'll give you that one for free. Tell me what else to write. Now this is hilarious, because it's literally your class. Come on, x1, you can do better than this. x1, what am I going to add to that? Plus x2. I'm going to divide by 2 because of course what you are doing, as we alluded to earlier, is you're finding an average, right? That's what a midpoint is in this context. So you've averaged the x-coordinates and then what else do you average? The y-coordinates, so we get this guy. <clears throat> that is the midpoint of this interval which gives us that median, okay? Now, this property is saying that if you have a look at this, you should get this ratio 2 to 1. You should, okay? So let's see what happens, because we now know this coordinate geometry knowledge. Let's see what happens if I divide it up 2 to 1. You have a formula for this, right? Let's call um, the centroid, that point, let's call it P for point. Um, how do I divide this up? Well, P is going to use the ratio division formula, right? What's the ratio you've got? Look, 2 to 1, 2 to 1, okay. Now you, you guys remember in the ratio division formula, um, order matters, doesn't it, right? 2 to 1 is not the same as 1 to 2, okay. So you've got your, um, I mean you do have this on the reference sheet, but you guys are x1, I'd like you to be able to get to that point where you actually remember this result. Depending on which way you use it, the one that I remember, the one that I remember being given was this. You've got uh, n x whatever, I'm going to put a, something else there in a second, plus m x the other whatever on m plus n. Do you remember this? Do you remember when you learned it and you're like, oh, you've got to watch out for that order because you'll do it the other way around if you don't get the order correct. And then you do the same thing with the y's, right? n and then your y coordinate, m and then your other y coordinate, and then you add your two parts of the ratio, right? Now, can we do that? with this particular set of points. This is the medium I'm focused on, the up-down one, okay? We just worked out the coordinates of m. Here are the coordinates of the other end of the median, okay? So I'm going to say, let's have a look here. If I'm going 2 to 1, that's 2 to 1, 2 to 1. When I look at these, I have to flip them around. So that's going to be a 1 and a 2, a 1 and a 2. Let's now substitute this in for these particular points, okay? 2 to 1. Which of the points is my starting point? 2 to 1. Am I going to start here or am I going to start there? Think carefully. Look at the order of the numbers, right? 2 comes first starting from this side and then 1. Okay, so I have to put this guy in as my first ratio, right? So it's 1 times x3 plus 2 times, now what's the x coordinate? Have a look at it. I just wrote it up above, right? It's this guy here? Yes. So I'm going to write that in as half x1 plus x2. Are you okay with that? That's the x coordinate I get from the midpoint. And I divide that all by 3 in this case. Fantastic. And then I'm just going to rinse and repeat for the y coordinate, right? I've got 1 from the ratio. Uh, it's y3 because you told me to start up at this point over here. Plus 2. That comes from the ratio times half, here's the other coordinate on the bottom, right? All divided again by 3. Fantastic. Okay, now, do you notice what's happening, right? What, what happens to this numerator up here? That 2, for instance, what's going on? It cancels with the half. So in fact, all you get left with from this is 
x1 plus x2, and then all you get from this is x3, right? x1 plus x2 plus x3, and that's all divided by 3. Then you've got, what's on the right hand side? Is everything the same, but for y's, right? Okay, now what have we just established? Well, we looked at one particular median. We looked at this midpoint, we went to the opposite side, and then we did the coordinate, sorry, the ratio division formula. And this is what we came, with, came up with. But I just want you to notice, look at this result. Doesn't it look strange, right? Or, or maybe when I say strange, I mean like neat, really nice, and like, ooh, this is one of those answers, you get to the end, you're like, this must be the right answer, right? Um, what we call this is it is, um, it's symmetric. Now, you're used to thinking of symmetry like um, reflectional symmetry or rotational symmetry. You're used to thinking of, of that kind of symmetry. But this is a different kind of symmetry. I started with these two to get the midpoint, and then I went to that. But can you see, I would get exactly the same result if I hadn't have started with this particular pair and gone to that midpoint. If I'd gone to this midpoint, right, all my numbers would be rearranged. I wouldn't have x1, x2. I'd have, look, I'd have x1, x3. But do you see, I'm going to get exactly the same thing. I don't need to do this all over again because it's a symmetric result. Right? I can shuffle around the 1s and 2s and 3s and there is no difference whatsoever. Okay? So, you're done. You have just proved, number one, that if you did all the medians from all the different directions, you'd still come up with the same coordinates. That means, that's the definition of them being concurrent. You just found the coordinates of the centroid. And the way we got there is by using the ratio division formula, 2 to 1. That's what produced this. So, I, I'm, I'm done. I'm finished. 1, 2, 3, 4 lines compared to, I don't even want to count how many lines that is. Not to mention the, the thinking that goes into... This is just obvious, like how else do I find a midpoint? How else do I do ratio division? That's it, okay? Yeah. So yes? But when you substitute it into the ratio formula, you took the assumption that we knew the ratio was in two to one. Okay, very good. The question was, like, have I just assumed that the ratio is two to one? And I actually haven't. What I've done is I've said, what if I divided it up in two to one? Right? What if I did that? And then where would I be? Okay, so I haven't ab actually established by just by doing 2 to 1 that that's going to be the centroid. But then when I look at the result that I get after doing it 2 to 1, I find that this thing will be the same if I went from that side or from, or from that side. They're all going to give me the same point. And that means they are all concurrent. So I've used this as my sort of like stepping stone, right? And then I've proved the rest of it, if that makes sense. Okay. Good question.